everyone. So today we're going to have a look at um, character analysis of Romeo. Um, and what I wanted to do is I kind of wanted to discuss the kind of things that you need to have when it comes to analysing the character, because uh, it's not enough just to think about quotes. So a couple of things that we need. Um, number one, I think that we need to have um, adjectives to describe them. I think it's such an easy way to boost your mark um, uh, to try and come up with some kind of clever adjectives um, and clever ways of describing them instead of just, you know, trying to think what, you know, what everyone else is going to write about. Number two, obviously, is quotes. Uh, obviously, we need quotes if we're going to be able to um, explore outside of the extract. Um, we need an understanding of the narrative, so of the plot and how they develop it or alter it. So really that their importance to the story, you know, what did they do in the story? Why are they there? Why did Shakespeare bother putting Romeo in? Um, stretch and challenge. Uh, you might think about theory regarding the character. You might think about portrayals of the character on screen or in theatre. Um, all of these combined then are going to enable you to come to some perceptive conclusions, some clever ideas about the characters. So in this video, I'm literally going to go through all of these, these one, two, three, four, five things I'm going to go through. I'm going to give you examples. So if I was you, I'd take some notes down um, uh, and, and try and really expand on your knowledge of Romeo. OK, then. Right. So uh, throughout this, I've got um, different images uh, of uh, portrayals of Romeo in film um, that I've tried to um, so, you know, try to uh, include because I think it's really important that you, you maybe, you know, go away and try and watch a few different film versions. I know that I did it when I did it at A level. I tried to watch like a musical version. I tried to watch, um, you know, snippets of like the ballet version, things like that online. I'm um, just trying to enrich my understanding of it. So you might want to think afterwards if you can try and find which film versions uh, these images come from. So we're going to start off with a list of adjectives. If there are any that you don't understand, I want you to go and Google them. Um, but things like, um, you know, he's a very articulate person, um, person, he's a very articulate character um, in terms of, you know, he's quite intelligent, the way he argues. So if I was to back that up, I'd maybe look at um, where he's buying the poison from the apothecary. And um, uh, he argues that, you know, poison isn't re not real poison. Money poisons men more than poison does. And he just calls the port poison cordial. So like juice. Um, so that's, yeah, he's been quite articulate there. Um, uh, he's an idealist. He's not a realist. So, you know, he has these grand ideas of him and Juliet being together when in reality that won't work because of the family feud. He's quite fickle. He jumps from Rosaline um, to then being madly in love with Juliet. Um, some of these um, some of these are, you know, tying together some of these adjectives do. Um, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that as time goes on. And some of them you could argue against, you know, arguably, is he loyal if he um, kills Tybalt? You know, obviously he's loyal to Mercutio, but is he loyal to Juliet? We don't know, you know, in terms of like how, um, uh, we don't really know so much how Juliet thinks about it in a way, you know, we know that she's extremely annoyed um, about it, but she doesn't talk about him being disloyal. So it kind of comes down to you as to what you think, okay? OK, so the first adjective I'm going to look at is um, capricious. So it's that idea of, you know, having kind of sudden um, changes in mood or ideas. So um, uh, it's quite easy. You know, it's linked to the idea of him being fickle. Um, whenever I think of analysing Romeo as a character, um, this is one of the adjectives that I would come to this one or fickle. Um, uh, and also it's quite Im impetuous as well. There's quite a few interesting adjectives you can use to describe him negatively. Um, and this is one of them that I would choose. Um, so I'd have a look at this quote, for I never saw a true beauty till this night. This is where he describes Juliet when, you know, only scenes before he's been madly uh, in love with Rosaline. Um, so for me, I always think that's a, that's a really good kind of point to um, when you're looking at and you're analysing Romeo as a character, is to really kind of slate him um, for um, the way in which he jumps from Rosaline to Juliet so ridiculously quickly. Um, so yeah, he's quite capricious. I always struggle saying that word capricious. Um, okay, so next one is um, quixotic. Um, again, another difficult word to say. Um, so uh, this is where, you know, he's um, in terms of like, he's very like idealist, he's not very realist, he's a bit of a dreamer basically. Um, so this is quite a nice word to use. I've seen this um, used by other people that have um, uh, taught this and I think it's a really nice way of describing him. Uh, so for example now here you'll note that I've picked a Benvolio quote, I haven't picked a quote by Romeo because actually I wanted to point out that sometimes when you're describing a character it's good to get other characters opinions of them and their actions. Um, it's just the same as you know if you were to talk about a friend you might talk about what someone else thinks about that friend. Um, so it's good to get what the other characters reactions to them are. 
So Benvolio says, alas, that love so gentle in his view should be, should be so tyrannous and rough in proof. Um, so in essence, Benvolio um, thinks that, you know, Romeo is not being very realistic about love. And he's, you know, he's kind of a bit like airy fairy with love. Um, and Benvolio thinks, you know, uh, love should be more simplistic. Um, uh, and, you know, that Romeo is kind of like this being portrayed as this typical Trakan lover. Um, so again, so that's quite a nice one to have a look at. And it's a little bit different as well. Um, I always think Benvolio is quite, um, uh, I won't say an underrated character, but I always think he's kind of forgotten about in a way. So it's quite nice if you can get a Benvolio quote in there. Okay, so emotional, all of us can understand um, how emotional Romeo is, I'm sure. Um, and we'll talk about it a bit later on in terms of Baz Luhrmann's um, uh, interpretation of Romeo and Juliet. Um, so when Romeo is with the apothecary, he says, Tush, thou art deceived, leave me and do the thing I bid thee do. So basically he's saying to um, to the guy, he just wants poison, just like leave me alone. And to me, I think this is like, I always think he's kind of like, uh, almost quite a typical annoyed angry teenager here he's like leave me alone let me get on with it um so this again is quite an unusual quote to pick for him being emotional the you know uh, more typical one might be when um Kisho dies uh, or when he's trying to um kill Tybalt or it might be act one scene five where he's um yeah you know falling in love with Juliet but um, I always think it's nice to try and pick a more of an unusual quote if you can Okay, so what we want you to do then is just pause the video. Can you try and find a quote for the rest of these adjectives? So in essence, you need to justify all these adjectives to put forward. Um, you can ignore the three they've already done if you like, um, but have a think about, you know, finding one for him being devoted, maybe about um, where he where he kills Tybalt for Mercutio. Try and find one about him being rebellious, where he, you know, climbs over um, uh, the Capulet's walls and able to, to go and speak to Juliet. Okay, so just pause the video and give that a go. OK, so I always get asked about how do you structure um, essay uh, essays out? And I'm looking at doing a video about about this um, in particular. However, if I was to look at this one, how does Shakespeare present the character of Romeo? I would go about it like this. So I'd um, do a thesis same introduction. I've done a video on this before. You can check that out. Um, I would then set up my paragraph one. So my introduction, obviously responding to the question. I'm going to show you a thesis statement for this later on. Uh, paragraph two, paragraph three, and a conclusion. Okay, so paragraph one, I'm going to look at my first adjective from my thesis statement, um, the idea here for being capricious. Um, uh, then again, another hard word to say, um, quixotic, I think. And then I'm going to look at him being emotional. So all three of these adjectives, I'm going to look at um, uh, in depth um, in the paragraphs. So I'm going to explore for you know at least one quote for each one. Um, so that's going to going to form my analysis. It's just me analysing what kind of character is he, and that's the way I'm going to do that is by using these adjectives. It's quite simplistic, um, you know, someone that maybe um, uh, you know writes a bit more um, uh, intuitively and naturally uh, might uh, not have it so prescriptive as this. You know, one adjective here, one here, one here. But that's just the way that I'm going to um, I would potentially go about it in mine. OK, then, how important is Romeo to the narrative? OK, so on the right, you're going to see an extract from Act 1, Scene 5. Um, and um, uh, we'll, we'll just go through some of the ways that I think he's super important. So number one, obviously, he's arguably the driving force for the narrative. Um, he is the one that, um, and I'll come on to this in a second, he's the one that in introduces himself to Juliet and he makes the first move, which you can see on the right. Um, he approaches her. He, you know, he's the one that asks someone at the ball um, who she is. So it is, you know, driven by Romeo. Um, uh, and he's the one that also brings up the idea of the kiss first as well, literally when he first meets her. Um, his fickle nature and poor decision making is used by Shakespeare to develop the action, create conflict, increase the tension. OK, if I was you, I'd learn that sentence. That's such an easy way um, of, you know, trying to explain it whilst talking, you know, using AO2 techniques. So looking at the idea of developing action, creating conflict, increasing tension. All of these are structural techniques that, you know, Romeo is really, really important, um, uh, you know, is really important for because um, Shakespeare all the time is using him as a plot device. Obviously, another you know point that I haven't got down is the fact that the play is literally called Romeo and Juliet, which tells us straight away that he's going to be extremely important, and his name does come first in the title as well, which you know is something that I don't often think about, but um, you might want to think about why that's the case. Okay, so he kills Tybalt, which leads to his exile, but that also causes Lord Capulet to arrange the wedding of Juliet and Paris to cheer Juliet up. Um, I always think that's kind of like ignored a little bit. Um, you know, if you know. 
it's not just the fact that he's exiled, but it's also the fact that Lord Capulet wants to cheer Julia up because Tybalt was killed. And this is all because of Romeo's, um, uh, you know, quite a violent nature in, in terms of um, how he responds to Tybalt. Some of us could say, you know, it's just because of the time in which it was written and just it was just because of the, you know, the kinship bonds he has with Mercutio. Um, but, um, you know, he still he still makes that choice. It's still his free will, um, despite the whole theme of fate. So um, we're going to move on to some stretch and challenge stuff now, which is what do the critics say about Romeo? Um, so what I've done is I've put together, um, because I find a lot of my students, sometimes they want to mention critics, but they've got no idea how to research it, they don't know how to talk about it. For me, um, talking about critics is just something that you don't have to do at all. Um, it's just something that I find personally find quite interesting. And I found when I got to, you know, when I got to A level, when I got to uni doing English, um, that I actually got a lot easier in one way because I was suddenly allowed to talk about everyone else's opinions it didn't just come down to what I thought about the text so sometimes researching critics is just a way of developing your own opinions you don't even have to mention the critic you can say something as simple as um, some critics have argued that Romeo is rasher and less intelligent than Juliet very simple you don't have to learn their names you don't have to do it at all it's just something that I, I personally um, find can enrich a debate about um, a character and can give you more to write about because I think most students when they are writing about characters or quotes they just, it's just, there's just this inherent fear that I'm going to run out of things to talk about um, so critics just gives you another layer as well as you know context um, and your own ideas to um, uh, to discuss when looking at quotes Okay, so for example, Lupton believes that Romeo is rash and less intelligent than Juliet, um, which I think is, I think, in a way is quite fair to say. I think that he, I, I think he is quite an articulate character. Um, again, this is just her opinion. A critic is just someone that researches it at a higher level. Um, so it's just their opinion. You can argue against them. You don't, you don't have to agree with them at all. Um, Connolly believes that um, Mercutio um, uh, is this predatory lover, um, setting Romeo up in contrast to take on the role of this innocent, tragic hero. Um, I, I view Romeo quite negatively, um, so I would disagree with Connolly there. But I think it's really interesting, this idea that Mercutio and Romeo are these kind of um, almost binary opposite characters. And I think that's quite a nice way sometimes of perceptively analysing a character is to kind of pit them against another character. Um, uh, Charles Dibdin, who I just think has got the best name, um, argues that Rosaline has purposely been included in the play to show how reckless Romeo is, um, which I think is really uh, an interesting comment to make um, and something that I'm going to be talking about in my thesis statement. Um, but Richard Green believes that um, uh, it's not, it's not, you know, Romeo's not to blame for what happens in the in the in the narrative. Actually, it's um, it's, it's just accidents um, that lead to this happening which I personally don't agree with. I don't really see how it's an accident, you know, each critic to their own. Um, now, some of you, um, if you've gone and done a bit of research on critics, um, and especially those of you that want to study English at A-level, um, might have heard about, you know, psycho psychoanalytic critics, gender theory, things like that. Um, those critics that are driven by um, uh, studies of psychoanalysis use psychology and the ideas, you know, ideas of psychology, um, uh, to, and, and looking at the characters' psychology and their decision making um, uh, when making decisions about them. So, for example, um, Hallio believes that um, Romeo's impulsiveness um, is derived from ill controlled, partially dis uh, disguised aggression, um, which is quite interesting. And there's definitely probably some ideas about the the id. I believe it's the id, the ego, and the super, the super ego. It was a little while since I wrote about those. Um, we'll be quite interested to look at there. So, looking at some Freudian ideas there might be really, really interesting for you to research on. Um, another one that I think is really interesting is what um, Khan has written about the strict masculine code of violence imposed on Romeo um, drives the tragedy to its cruel end. So it's not really Romeo's fault. He's just acting within this code of violence, within, the, within this honour code that um, exists in Verona. Um, uh, so, for example, where Tybalt kills Mercutio, Romeo just shifts um, into this violent mode. Um, so it's not maybe not actually Romeo's fault. So all of this actually allows us to have a much more kind of... Um, uh, you know, uh, less of a one-sided approach to Romeo, actually, maybe it's not his fault, maybe it is his fault. Um, so I, I think critics allow us to have a really, you know, holistic kind of view of the character of Romeo. I just think it's quite an interesting way of getting into it, you know, especially if you're aiming for, you know, grade seven, eight, nine, you might want to just think about what have other people written about um, these characters, you know, what can I take from that um, and have, you know, use that to inspire your own work. Okay, then, right, I really, I forgot that 
the one on the right is, is a gif. Um, so stage and screen portrayals of Romeo. Um, you don't have to write about this. Again, this is just like the critics, but I just think it's a, sometimes a really, really interesting way of um, uh, of looking at um, uh, uh, Romeo as a character. So the word Romeo has become synonymous with male lover in, in the English language. So you know, think about what that tells you about its cultural significance. Um, so just as a just as a point here, um, a lot of this information I've taken by looking at um, uh, Google Books, for example. Um, you might want to check out Google Scholar. Um, Wikipedia actually has always got a section when it comes to the text, usually on criticism, um, stage and screen history as well. So some of this is even taken from Wikipedia, from the references in Wikipedia. So um, Wikipedia can actually be really, really useful for you as a student, because I think it's really hard for you to find all this information out um, on your own and kind of, you know, without seeing it in a condensed version. So this is hopefully just helpful for that. So, for example, um, if you ever watch West Side Story, which I watched when I was at, in, doing A-Level and I rewatched it recently and it's so much weirder than I remember. Um, it's got an interesting character of Tony, who is arguably a much more likable, loving character and version of Romeo. Um, so if you were to talk about Romeo as being likable, you could possibly mention in a couple of sentences the portrayal of Tony um, and how that helps you come to the conclusion that Romeo is possibly a lovable, likable character. Um, Baz Luhrmann's interpretation um, in the really interesting kind of MTV inspired um, uh, version of Romeo and Juliet. Uh, he's extremely emotional, uh, the version that DiCaprio plays. You know, if he's besotted with Rosaline, lovesick over Juliet or heartbroken over Mercutio, this uh, portrayal is extremely emotive and it really is driven by emotion. And finally, one of my favourite versions, um, there's a, um, uh, a show called Anne Juliet on the West End. Um, and here Romeo is portrayed to uh, have had multiple love interests and he's really interpreted as very arrogant as being filled with lust. And Juliet is actually kind of put off Romeo because of the fact that he's kind of portrayed as a player. Um, so that's another, even though it's a comedic version, again, it's interesting because all the time these interpretations are founded in something in the text. You know, you know, Romeo does move from Rosalind to Juliet. So actually, we can argue that he is, you know, driven by lust. Um, uh, but, you know, the argument against that would be that um, Rosaline was was chased, so she didn't want to. We shouldn't want to have sex with Romeo. But um, uh, yeah, so there's there's always something interesting to to take out of these interpretations. Okay, then right. So getting towards the end now. Um, this is my sample thesis statement. Uh, so we'll just read through it and then we're going to have a look at some what one wells I've given for it. So in Romeo Montague, Shakespeare simultaneously created a tragic hero as well as a lovesick over emotional villain. Blinded by his own fickle nature, Romeo propels the narrative forward with his poor decision making at every turn, unaware and unarguably unbothered by the devastation he leaves in his wake. Again, that is arguable. Um, Shakespeare presents him as why do I always pick this adjective? The quixotic, capricious and emotional lover. As a character, he is clearly inspired by Petrarch and lovers due to his melodramatic suffering, often being presented to inspire pathos in the audience and to make us feel bad for him. However, I would argue with critics such as Charles Dibdin, he believes that Romeo's recklessness is the true cause of tragedy in this play. It's clear that Shakespeare created one of the world's most famous lovers, but also one of the most frustrating tragic heroes in Romeo. OK, so uh, if I was to evaluate that, what have I done well? Um, I've answered the question. I've included some impressive vocab choices. I've included a little bit of contextual knowledge with the Petrarchan lovers. I've attempted some um, perceptive analysis. You know, I've tried to kind of argue against it and say, actually, I think he's a villain. Um, clearly, I've got to follow this through my paragraphs. Uh, I've made reference to the form of the text. We've talked about the idea of an audience. Um, and did I talk about, I feel, I feel like I mentioned uh, yeah, about it being a tragedy as well. There we go. Um, and I've included a AO2 terminology in terms of pathos and um, uh, where else did I include it? Pathos. And I think when I mentioned about the narrative as well. Yeah. OK, so um, but in terms of what could be improved, maybe I could have talked about less. I could be more specific. Um, but generally, this should be, you know, quite a good introduction, a thesis statement because I'm creating this argument. Um, and so I'll be looking at explaining that in my text. So you want to think about, you know, it, maybe you want to go away now and have a go at writing one yourself or, you know, maybe have a go at finishing this essay off um, using this as a starting point. And where would you go if, if you, you know, if you were me, where would you go with my with my uh, thesis? Statement? So 
I don't know why I, th I didn't animate the ticks. OK, so let's just go through all of the things that we have done then. We have now um, found adjectives to describe Romeo. We found quotes. We've written about um, uh, where, you know, where he's important in the narrative. We've done some stretch and challenge looking at theory and looking at portrayals of Romeo on the screen. Um, and then combine, you know, all, all of this, we've put together some perceptive conclusions about him as a character that actually I'm viewing him personally in quite a negative light. OK, so hopefully all of this has been really, really helpful for you. I would then suggest you now go forward and have a go at either picking another character or building what I've written here and writing up an essay. OK. Thank you very much.